What's going on guys and today is Friday which means it is vendor reset day we are sitting here just waiting two one here we go vendors have reset so we've got a liberator with 23.8 good roll again however I'm running a glass cannon build so you can't really go off of the damage so this week we have the historian now as Sanctionite said in the video on upper echelon gamers for preparing for 1.6 he said to farm the named weapons now the historian this week I would recommend buying right away because it has 168% headshot damage which is nearly max. This is the best historian I have seen in a couple of weeks so I would definitely recommend grabbing this historian. I'm going to pick one up right now. Next we have a Rhino special with Expert and Unforgiving. We have a PP-19 with Brutal, Destructive, and Hurried. Very good roll actually right here. Not too great on the critical hit damage because it's only 30%, but Brutal and Destructive would go really good on a PvE build. Moving on, we have a custom P416 with Brutal Prepared and Talented. If you want to run a gun for a skill build other than the Liberator, this would be good as Talented is in the bottom slot. However, the Liberator would still be a better option. We have a double barrel sawed off shotgun with destructive, responsive, fierce, a very good roll right here. I actually use a double barrel sawed off with brutal, responsive, and predatory, and I use it on downed agents or on red bar enemies. That way I can proc predatory and I can get the healing effect off of it, but this would be a very good roll on a shotgun if you want a sawed off shotgun. Next we have an M700, not a very good roll here, however very good headshot damage, it's too bad that the roll could not have been better. We have a classic M60 with talented, fierce, capable. We have a rehabilitated mask with not a very good roll as it's electronics. A sentry call mask with not a very good roll here either. A final measure mask with actually a really good roll. It's really bad on the armor, however it has crit chance. You can reroll increase kill XP to whatever you want. I would recommend enemy armor damage, but this would be a good pickup if you want to run a final measure build. We have a reckless vest with a decent roll on it, but not too great. The firearms is pretty low. It's got ammo capacity, but other than that, it's not a very good chest piece. We have a Lone Star vest, not a very good roll here. A relentless backpack. A Predator's Mark backpack with a very high electronics roll, however it doesn't have armor on it, so you would have to keep it as electronics or sacrifice the armor. We have a Firecrest backpack with a very good roll, it's got high firearms, it's got really good amount of armor on it. You could reroll it to ammo capacity or you could reroll it to another main stats such as stamina or electronics. We have a Deadeye backpack with armor already rolled onto it. So you could reroll it to stamina or firearms if you wanted to go with a dead eye build. An Alpha Bridge backpack, no armor, so you'd have to sacrifice that or the electronics. Prosperous knee pads, not very good. A D3 FNC knee pads, not very good, but we've already seen a god roll of these a few weeks ago. A nimble holster, a striker holster, a tactician's holster, and a reclaimer holster. None of these holsters are really standing out. Astute Gloves, Gloves of the Nomad, these are actually really good Nomad Gloves. They don't have very high firearms, however they do have Assault Rifle damage and Crit Chance. Health on Kill would be really good for a Nomad as it has a 15% Health on Kill bonus as it's two-piece. So these would actually be a really good pair of gloves if you wanted to do a Nomad build. We have Hunter's Faith Gloves with a really bad roll. We have Banshee Gloves with max armor rolled onto them, however the roll on them is just terrible. Electronics gear mod, a pulse critical hit damage gear mod, you could pick this up, however I would rather have the pulse critical hit chance, a high velocity magazine, a compensator, a laser, a reflex sight, and the normal caches. Now again, at any point during this video, if you see something that I may have gone too fast over or anything like that, feel free to pause it and check it out. Moving on to the blueprints vendor, we have an M870 Express blueprint, which is pretty cool. We have seen it before though. We have an RPK-74 blueprint. A lot of people are liking the RPK all of a sudden. It is a very good weapon, so I might actually pick one of these up. We have stamina knee pads, which would be really good if, if you still need accomplished knee pads and stamina. A quick release magazine I would stay away from, and a vertical grip I would stay away from because it's optimal range. Alright guys, moving on to the advanced weaponry vendor in the back of the base. We have the pecan. Not a good roll. The last week was even better. It's the same roll as always, but the damage and the damage out of cover is not very good. And then we have, as usual, the Cassidy, the Centurion. We have an M9. 
with Ferocious on it, so it's good for PvE. However, the X45 and 93R are a lot better. We have a T821, not very good. An MK16 with a not a very good roll on it. A custom M870 with not a very good roll on it. Competent should be in the bottom slot, so this is not a very good roll. We have a classic M1A. Now, this would be really good because it's got really high headshot damage. It's almost max. Um, it does have prepared on it, competent, and ferocious. Now, if you rerolled competent to destructive, it would be prepared, destructive, ferocious, and it would be a very good gun for PvE content. So I might actually pick one of these up. We have an RPK with deadly, capable, and then dominant in the top slot. Not a very good roll here. A heavy magazine spring, an omega rifle suppressor, a vertical grip, and a holographic sight. All right, moving on to the weapons vendor in the base, we have no purples, please. We have a SOCOM Scar L with just not a very good roll on it. You could reroll skill to something else if you could unlock predatory. You could have predatory, ferocious, destructive. It'd be really good for PVE, but the Scar L is just a very low rate of fire assault rifle, and it kind of doesn't have the stability like others do. We have a suppressor right here, not a good roll on it. Moving right next door to the gear vendor in the base. We have Astute Gloves again, not very good. And Seeker Mind Damage, so if you still want to do a Seeker Mind build, there is a gear mod here for 3.5% Seeker Mind Damage. Moving on to the Dark Zone gear vendor in the base, what we have here is a Covert SRS with not a very good roll on it, unfortunately. A Technical Backpack. It's a good roll, however, Technical is not something that we use very often. We have an Electronics Gear Mod, a Tyrant Suppressor, and Dark Zone Sealed Cache as always. Alright, moving on to Autumn's Hope Safe House up here by Bullet King. What we have here is we have a Robust Chest Piece, not a very good roll here. And then we have a Firearms Gear Mod with Skill Haste, so it's not armor, not very good. Alright, moving on up here to Wolves Den Safe House. What we have here is a Weapon Vendor, as always. He has a whole bunch of purples, not very good. He has a G36 with Determined, Predatory Focus. I would not recommend it, however, it does have max enemy armor damage. If you can unlock Predatory, reroll Determined to something else, it'd be good for PvE. However, Focused is just not that great of a talent to have. And we have a Vertical Grip, with not a very good roll. Alright, moving on to Dante's Run Safe House. What we have here for sale is a bunch of purples. We have Astute Gloves, very good roll. However, they are Astute, so not very good. We have a Performance Mod with Support Station Healing Speed, so if you want to do a Support Reclaimer Healer build, this would be a good pickup for you. They do max out at 5%, so 4.5 is actually very good. Alright, moving on to the Cavern Safe House. What we have here is we have a bunch of purples as always. We have a Technical Backpack, not very good. We have a Performance Mod with Seeker Mind Explosion and Radius, not very good there. I'd rather have Seeker Mind Damage. Alright, moving on to the Kerman Station Safe House. What we have here is weapons, and we have a Tactical Vector with actually a pretty good PvE roll. It's got low crit damage, however, it's got Responsive, Determined, and Ferocious. Reroll Determined to Destructive, and you have a very good PvE SMG. And we also have a heavy magazine spread, not very good here. However, I do actually recommend these if you run the PP-19 because it does have a large magazine, so you might as well get the extra rate of fire, and 10.4 is a lot of extra rate of fire. Alright, moving on to Camp Hudson down in the bottom left at the weapon vendor. What we have is a double barrel sawed off shotgun, not a very good roll. I would recommend the one in the base instead. And we have a PEQ laser. Moving on to the gear vendor down in Camp Hudson, what we have is a Enduring Mask with a bad firearms roll, damage to elites, and increased kill XP. And we have a firearms gear mod without armor. Alright, and today at the Meat Locker, what we have is we have an MK46 Determined Deadly Competent. A very good LMG roll actually right here. The MK46 actually has a lot higher base damage than a lot of the other LMGs. Reroll Determined to whatever you'd like and you would actually have a very good LMG here. We also have an ACOG site, not a very good roll there though. Alright, right here at Madison's stand for the vendor reset, what we have is a backpack, specialized, very good roll right here. It's got high firearms, critical hit damage, good ammo capacity, reroll crit damage over to armor, and you'd have a very good firearm specialized backpack. We also have a performance mod with ballistic shield damage resilience. 
All right, right here at the last call safe house, what we have is we have a classic M1A with commanding toxic proficient, not a very good roll. And we have an Omega Rifle Suppressor with a good amount of headshot damage, stability, and crit chance. This would be a good pickup if you still need a suppressor or a good headshot damage mod for a sniper rifle or an AR. So I would definitely pick this up if you still need one. Alright, moving on to the ward down here by Falcon Lost. What we have is we have a Steadfast Holster, not very good. We have an Electronics Gear mod with exotic damage resilience, no armor unfortunately so far this week. Moving on to the Southpaw safe house, what we have here is we have a incentive backpack, not very good. And we have a firearms gear mod with crit chance, no armor. Moving on to the grindhouse safe house, it's a weapons vendor, so let's see if they got something good. A covert SRS, not a very good roll. And a PEQ laser, also not a very good roll. Moving on to the firewall safe house, what we have here we have cunning gloves with a decent roll, but they are cunning. We have a firearms gear mod, still no armor. Moving on to the crypt safe house, and the last of the safe houses in the light zone, we have an M870 Express with trained, responsive, and adept. Not a good roll right here. And we also have a small suppressor. All right, moving on to the dark zone checkpoints. First off is East 53rd Street, and what he has for sale is a tactical UMP with a terrible roll. A vigorous chest piece, pretty good roll here. It's got armor on it already. It's a low firearms. It has exotic damage resilience. So what you could do is you could reroll the increased kill XP if you still want to keep it firearms, but it's a low roll. Or you could reroll the main stat to whatever you want. We have a performance mod with support station duration. And we have a Tyrant suppressor. This is a very good suppressor for pistols or SMGs as it has crit chance, headshot damage, and crit damage. All right, moving on to East 46th Street at the Dark Zone vendor, and we have an M700 with a terrible roll. We have a tactical holster with sturdy. It does have armor on it, so if you do want a sturdy holster, this could be a good pickup for you. However, it does have low armor on it. We have a firearms gear mod, no armor, and we have a large suppressor with a pretty bad roll. All right, moving on to East 42nd Street, what we have here for sale. We have a tactical M1911, not very good. We have prosperous knee pads with not very good roll on them. However, they are prosperous, so they're not very good overall. A performance mod with pulse duration and a heavy magazine spring. Moving on to East 40th Street in the DZ checkpoints, what we have is an M44 with a pretty bad roll on it, a steadfast holster, a performance gear mod with secret mine explosion radius, and a large suppressor, not very good. All right, moving on to the East 34th Street at the Dark Zone vendors, we have an infantry MG5, not a very good roll, a nimble holster, an electronics gear mod, still no armor, and a hand stop with reload speed. Alright, moving on to the East 31st Street Dark Zone vendor. We have a first wave PF45 with competent in the bottom slot. We have an accomplished knee pads with enemy armor damage and a very good stamina roll. So if you do need accomplished knee pads with stamina, these would be very good. Just reroll the protection from elites to armor. We have a performance mod with turret damage, 4%, which is the max, so if you do want to do a turret build, this would be the performance mod for you. It's a very good one. I would pick up about four of them. An angled grip with stability as the main stat, not very good. All right, moving on to 5th Avenue at the very bottom of the DZ. We have a first wave vector with destructive dominant meticulous, a pair of cunning gloves with a bad roll, a firearms gear mod, and a muzzle brake. Nothing of note here. Alright, moving on to the west side of the checkpoint, starting at West 31st Street. At the Dark Zone vendor, we have a classic AK-47 with a very good roll. It's low on the enemy armor damage, it does have higher base damage, it does have responsive, destructive, vicious, reroll the bottom slot to competent, and you have a very good AK-47. We have a rejuvenated mask, a performance mod with support station duration, and an ACOG scope. The only thing of note here is the AK-47. Alright, moving on to the West 34th Street checkpoint at the Dark Zone vendor, we have an ACR with not a very good roll on it. We have prosperous knee pads, a firearms gear mod, and a compensator. Nothing of note here. Alright, moving on to West 39th Street, what we have is a black market SASG with not a very good roll on it. We have Savage Gloves, very good pair actually, they have a good amount of firearms, they have SMG damage, crit chance, now you could re-roll the damage to elites to crit damage or leave it as damage to elites for PvE, but these are definitely a good pair of Savage Gloves. 
We have Electronics Gear Mod with Armor. 250 Electronics, 268 Armor. We finally find a Gear Mod with Armor this week. So if you need Electronics Gear Mods with Armor, pick up a couple of these. And a scope with crit damage, headshot damage, and stability. It's actually a pretty good scope, and it will fit on almost all guns. I would pick one of these up if you need something with crit damage. All right, moving on to West 42nd Street. Dark Zone vendors, what we have is an X-45. We have Prosperous knee pads with armor, no enemy armor damage, but Prosperous is not very good, so I would pass on them. An Electronics gear mod with skill power. An extended magazine, it's not very good. This is actually more of like an item level 33 extended magazine, so I would definitely pass on it. Here at the West 46th Street, what we have is an MG5 commanding brutal competent. Actually a very good roll on this MG5, reroll commanding to whatever you'd like. It has brutal and competent in the bottom slot, so you could reroll it to vicious or destructive. This is a very good MG5 though for sale this week. We have Savage Gloves, we have a performance mod with turret health 7% which is max so if you want turret health mods these are very good. And we have an angled gripped red with stability as the main stat. Alright moving on to the last of the dark zone checkpoints at West 53rd street in the top left. We have a classic M60 with a not a very good roll on it, a forceful vest, a firearms gear mod with health instead of armor and a heavy magazine spring. All right, moving on to the DZ safe rooms. First in DZ02, which is the gear vendor. We have a tenacious mask, not very good roll, a reckless chest piece, a specialized backpack, accomplished knee pads, steadfast holster, savage gloves with shotgun damage and crit damage. So you could reroll damage to elites to crit chance and have a, a decent pair of savage shotgun gloves. However, they are low on the firearms. All right, moving on to DZ3 safe house, which is weapons. Let's hope for something good. We have an M9 pistol with deadly, a T821, a bad start. However, brutal, unforgiving predatory would be very good for an Alpha Bridge SMG. Reroll predatory to adept, fierce, or whatever you need, and it would be very good for an Alpha Bridge SMG build. An AK-47 with predatory self-preserve deadly. Very good for a PVE build. However, I did mention one earlier that is even better. A Super 90 with Brutal Determined Capable, a Scar H with Ferocious Deadly Determined, not very good here, an RPK with Self Preserved Fierce and Deadly, not very good here, so nothing really good this week. Alright, here at the DZ4 vendor, what we have here is we have a Firearms Gear mod without armor and a Performance mod with Ballistic Shield damage, so if you are going to run a Ballistic Shield build, I would definitely recommend this one. It's going to up your damage by quite a bit. All right, moving on to the DZ-5 safe room in the dark zone. What we have is a high velocity mag, an omega rifle suppressor, pretty good. However, I did mention one earlier with higher headshot damage. I would recommend that one over this. We have a laser with accuracy as the main stat, and we have improved iron sights with stability as the main stat. All right, moving on to the DZ-6 safe room and our final stop this week. What we have is a Predator's Mark Mask, not a very good roll, a Firecrest Vest with not a very good roll, a Reclaimer Backpack, Firecrest Knee Pads with almost max base armor on them, so I might actually pick these up. They don't have enemy armor damage on them, however, that armor is very, very high. We have a Striker Holster, Predator's Mark Gloves with not a very good roll on them, and that is it for this week, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out Upper Echelon Gamers on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And check out our Discord. We have DZ911 to help you out with any rogues, which there are some outside right now. So I'm going to go fight them right after I end this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully I slowed it down a little bit this week for you guys. I tried not to talk as fast as I did last week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one a little bit better. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody.